Hi guys, I'm just trying to get to my chat on my phone so I can see you. Ah, there we are. Hi Candace, hi Susie, hey Melissa, hi Sherry, hi Cynthia, hi Pam. Hello, Susan. How is everybody this Saturday? Hi, Laura. Hi, Lori. My glasses on so I can see everything over there. Gosh, wearing reading glasses is kind of a pain in the butt, you guys. Cynthia's waiting for Walmart to bring her groceries out. Good girl. All right. Okay, so ooh, my uh, why is my thing all wobbly here? Okay, we're good. Um, all right, so we have a lot of new people in our foiling snobs club group if you don't know what our group is it's a facebook group that tracy and i began as a creative uh, a group to support each other we are not sponsored by any companies um it's just for tracy and i to you know expand our youtube audience but also so you guys can go to a group of people and say hey I have a question about this. I have a question about that. And they're not trying to tell you, well, you have to buy, you know, certain brands because it's sponsored by, you know, like Ranger or Misty or Catherine Pooler, you know, the, all the brands that we love, but it's not their groups. Okay. Um, and we all are very friendly. We help each other out and it's just a very warm, inviting environment. Right. And we don't deal with any drama. And as soon as people start stirring the pot or they're negative whether it be on our youtube channel or in our facebook group like they're gone they are no longer invited into the group um we just don't put up with it so if that's what you're looking for please join us at foiling snobs club on facebook and you got to answer all the questions to come in all right so hey karen hey cheryl um let's see here i think i got everybody all right, so, hi, Elizabeth. Hey, Jennifer. So, um, a lot of the questions that we get are obviously foiling related, although we don't just do foiling. So, I wanted to do a basics one-on-one -on, -one on toner foiling. All right, now, you guys who have been around a long time are going to say, Nance, why are you doing this? Because a lot of people don't go back and watch old YouTube videos. And we have a lot of new people in the group. So I thought I would do this basics, okay? So um, the first one is we're going to use a laminator, all right? So there are two laminators that I recommend. They are both under $30. So tip number one is, no, you don't have to have a mink. But if you're going to be doing this consistently and you want, you know, superior results, then I'm always going to say use a mink. But I understand a mink is expensive. They're hard to find. Um, they're $65 at Blick for the small one. I'll put all the links in the description for you. But I'm going to be using a laminator today. Again, just to show you guys the basics that you can use a laminator. Um, and what I'm, what I'm trying to do here, my point today is... You saw a couple videos, you went out to the store, and you said, I want to try foiling. Maybe it's not your thing yet. Maybe this is just something you're going to do once or twice a year. That's what my point of this video is. So please don't buy more than a $30 laminator. I recommend two. The swing line laminator, and what you're looking for is for it to have um, a hot laminator, uh, and you want it to obviously turn on. This one also has a cold setting, but you want it on hot. And the secret to using a laminator is you need it to get really hot. So you want this to heat up for probably about 30 minutes. The hotter it gets, the better. 
okay? The second laminator that I recommend if you're going to do it the laminator way is the Amazon Basics. I have both of them. I honestly keep one in my car for work because I do a lot of laminating at work. So I have one in my car uh, and one in my office. But if you're going to really jump into this and you want high quality, professional looking results, I'm going to always recommend a mink. I know a couple of people in our group have had some bad, um, bad um, minks. Like they came and they just didn't work properly. They didn't turn on. They burned up, whatever. That's going to happen in any electronics. When you have a lot of people doing the same thing and they sell out quickly, you're going to get, unfortunately, some faulty ones. They're still made it by people, okay? So, yes, you do want to turn it on. And the secret here is you got to let it heat up for about a half an hour, guys. If you just wait the 10 minutes and then this goes to green and you try to foil with it, it's not going to work. So, mine's been on for about 20 minutes now. So, we're just going to put this aside and let this warm up. So, Swing Line or Amazon's Basics, if you want a cheap laminator, do not, do not, do not use or buy the $80 laminator that the big name YouTubers are telling you to buy. It is not worth it. It is not worth the expense. And for that much money, you might as well buy a mink. Honestly, true for that, okay? Thank you, Melissa. Okay. All right. So the second thing I'm going to tell you is foil does matter. I am a foiling snob after all. So there are a few companies I recommend um, if, again, you want higher quality foiling and you want better quality foiling. So what I mean by that is, and a better value. There are a lot of foiling companies. You can go into any store and pick these up. You can get these at Walmart. You can get these at Michael's. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, right? You can get them, I think Joann's has them now. There's a lot of companies that sell foil, right? Deco Foil is the most widely known marketed brand. Now, I want to be careful with how I say this because I really don't want to offend anybody. But when you have something that is highly marketed, usually the price goes up, but you're not getting any more for your money, right? For example, I'm not trying to offend anybody here. I am not an iPhone person because I think you pay way too much money for an iPhone because of the Apple name when you can purchase a Samsung phone or something else when you're getting just as good a quality, but because it's not an Apple phone, you're not paying as much. So you think about it like that. So Deco Foil is a very good brand, but you're going to see, you know, in terms of value, I just want to show you here that these come, and this is the Mink brand, these come in rolls of five. And you get five sheets in here in these rolls. And be careful. Sometimes you only get three sheets. You got to look at the packaging. And this is how long the sheets of foil are. Okay, so this has five sheets. And they're not on a roll. They're just five sheets like this. Okay, versus the companies that I recommend to you either... Crafty Krita or Pro, Fo Pro World Foil or H&H &H Foil, they are considered textile foils. Textile foils come on a roll of 25 feet. So 25 feet versus 5 feet, okay? I just want you to think about the value there. You're paying, exactly, you're paying for the name, like Cheryl says, not necessarily. So, yes. If you're starting out, you're going to grab what you see at the store. I am going to be demonstrating with these. I do not buy any of these anymore because I know I can get a better value from doing my homework and my research from the other shops. But I'm going to demonstrate these for you guys because I have them. They're sitting in my stash and I'm not using them. The other way that Deco Foil, which is owned by ThermoWeb, they're the parent company, sells their foils in their sheets like this. And I have told you guys years and years of my detest for this because these come up, that's these come in a sheet like this. You get 12 sheets, and they're only six by eight sheets. So if you are doing a card front panel, you cannot get more, you can't get, you can only get one and a half, basically. Okay, see that? You get one. You cannot do two card panels on this, okay? So they're out there. 
They work. If you are just starting out and you start with these supplies, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to be demonstrating these today. What I want you to do is to think about how much you're going to be doing foiling. And if you're going to be consistently foiling and you want to get better at it, then you want to invest in better products up front. When we first learned to stamp, we all bought pigment inks. We all bought rubber stamps and then silicone stamps come out and we thought they were okay but they really weren't okay <laughs> so um, I do recommend if this is something you're going to invest in start with a mink machine or get a mink machine eventually and then get other brands of foils and we have Crafty Critter which has over 45 different types of foil um, we have Blue Bonnet which has um, toner foil and hot foil and we have pro world foil so there's a lot of companies out there where you can get 25 feet of foil versus a couple of sheets okay um sue i know you think that that's true but that's not exactly true her foils are manufactured with the same foiling companies that everybody else is using but she'll find her card stock to match that um, these are very generic foils. I can find these foils at any other company that I recommend. H&H uh, &H has the blue stars. H&H &H has um, the pink stars. So, yes, she's marketing it that way because that's a genius way for her to market it on her end. Okay. All right. So, the other thing that I'm going to recommend is buying these toner sheets. Okay. A lot of you don't want to get into a laser printer well, Decofoil does make a lot of beautiful toner sheets. So this is a Unity Design toner sheet. It's, again, owned by Decofoil, which is ThermoWeb. And ThermoWeb owns all of this. ThermoWeb has this, the foiling lines. They do the foiling for um, their own brand, which is Decofoil. They do it for Gina K. They do it for Brutus Monroe. They do it for... There's another company that just jumped on. And, again, these are marketing tactics for you guys. At the end of the day, it's all made by the same company, okay? Um, so you may think, oh, this is special to that company. I will guarantee you it's not special to any specific company. Most foils come out of um, Europe or Asia, primarily Asia. And so a lot of these companies buy in bulk, buy in wholesale. They cut it down. They market it to you. The better their marketing is, the more you're going to buy, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying if you do your homework, you can usually invest your money and get more for it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so here, here's a Unity Design. These are called toner card fronts. These are specially printed out of a laser printer or a toner. So these are pre-cut and pre-printed for you, and you get eight of these, I believe. Yeah, you get eight of them. These are very pretty. I just picked these up at the, at the show. These are only $3.99. I got these from... Um, my craft room got these, okay? Now, I also ordered some from Gina K. So here's Gina K's with her little butterflies here. Now, these are eight and a half by 11 sheets, but you gotta be careful because they do not go edge to edge. So when you cut this down, there is a white line, so you won't get a full five and a half by four and a quarter out of this. You'll probably have to cut it down to five and a quarter by four or smaller. And you only get two sheets. Sorry, four. You get four sheets with this. Why did I think there was only two in here? Okay, and this one happens to be the same design. Same thing, printed out of commercial printer, high quality toner sheets. And other companies, again, have other designs for the season. Um... So you can find them. Gina K also has, she used to have, I don't know if she still does or not. She used to have a uh, stamping and foiling. So here's one of her butterfly kisses. And this has little butterflies and you can stamp them and die cut them out. So it's like a little kit. So if you run out of the foiling part, you still have the stamps and the dies and I will link I do have links for all of this stuff if you guys would use my affiliate links that would really help out um, but so you want to have foil you want to have a heat source in this case I'm using a laminator and you want to have toner sheets 
That's the only three things you need to start basic foiling. You don't have to invest a lot of money. You don't have to buy a mink machine. You don't have to buy high quality toner foils unless you feel like this is something you're going to do for a long time or you're going to do a lot of. I know a lot of you guys only do foiling if it's a special occasion. Maybe every once in a while you do somebody's birthday card. Or maybe you only do it when it's Christmas card season. You know, whatever it may be is fine. And if you're only going to do it once in a while, then this laminator method and buying some foils you like and buying some toner sheets you like is all you need to get started. If you're somebody who wants to do it more often, you really like the look of foiling, then you're gonna wanna just invest in a little bit higher quality machines and foils and the, and the toner prints as well. That does make a difference. There's a lot of companies that have started to jump into toner prints and they say to you, oh, these, these are laser printed, but you can foil them. Be very wary of that because um, they're not lying, but they're not always the best quality. You want a heavier cardstock, and generally you want this to be super smooth. Uh, sometimes they have a little bit of a gloss to them. Can you see that paper reflecting? Those are going to be the best quality. So you can see this paper is of really good quality. See that little bit of gloss to it? Okay. And then Crafty Critter. We just did a 20% off sale with them. They're amazing, but they do ship from Australia. So I understand some of you guys are like, well, I don't want to wait two weeks if I can run out to Hobby Lobby today and get this stuff. You can pick up all this stuff at Hobby Lobby. All right, so let me cut this one down. I like if they're a little bit bigger sheets because then I can decide what size I want my pro project to be. Um, but having options, like Candace said, is what this is about because the way I foil may not be the way that you foil. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with everybody doing it a little differently. All right, so we're gonna do that. Okay. The secret I'm gonna tell you that nobody else has told you yet and the reason no one else has told you yet is because they don't want you to know because they don't know, okay? So the enemy to foiling is always dust. So if you have glitter, embossing powder, pets, um, anything like that on your desk, it's going to get onto your foil and your foil can't stick. So your foil sticks to the dark toner printed images here. So I'm going to recommend any kind of a soft brush. And all you want to do is you want to dust off your project and you want to dust off the back of your foil before you put that foil on there. This is a huge game changer in foiling. You don't want those little black spots of foil peeking through or toner peeking through because there's dust. Okay. Now, on the laminator system, you do not need to use any kind of special cover sheets. They do provide you in a lot of these um, toner printal, printable things, um, parchment paper, but you can use regular copy paper. I do not recommend using the mink sheets because the mink sheets are too thick and too heavy, so you don't want to use those. So these come with little parchment paper packets, and all this is designed to do is to help prevent your um, foil and your card from getting separated and getting super wrinkled in your in your uh, machine. Doesn't help with the foiling or anything. It just helps to protect everything. That's all. And you always want to put the folded edge in. So I'm gonna slide that in my laminator here, and I always try to put it in the center. And that one was Gina K Fancy Foil Brilliant Blue. This one's Gina K Fancy Foil Dazzling Orange. The same as Blue Stars and Orange Stars if you have them from H&H. &H. I do, I do um, like a, a lot of Gina K's designs. They're very pretty. Uh, but I can, you know, like I said, I can buy the rolls of foil 
for a better value. And a lot the other thing I don't like about these foils is a lot of time there's static electricity. So you have to be careful of that. All right. Once your foil is done going through the laminator, you can try to run it through twice if you don't feel that it's um, transferring for you. You don't always have to. I'm going to go through with the orange with this one. And you want to keep your scraps because you can use your scraps on toner sheets. You can use your scraps on uh, sentiments. All right, so we're going to um, dust off our project. We're going to dust off the back of our foil. We're going to put the foil. Now, this is completely different than a hot foiling system. Do not get this mixed up with hot foiling. There's a lot of companies out there that think that foiling and hot foiling are the same. This is toner foiling. It is not hot foiling, okay? This doesn't use dyes. It doesn't use a glimmer machine. Uh, it doesn't use any of that. This is, this is all we're doing is a laminator. Um, some foil sheets and some toner sheets. So you could essentially start foiling for under $40. Under $40, I think, is a very good budget for somebody who's just starting this and just dabbling in it. Sue, that's just personal preference. Yep. Yeah, personal preference on what kind of patterns you want. Mary, I agree. We need to support these companies and make sure that they are still in business. Yep. That's why I do Stamp Wars, Mary, to bring awareness to these kinds of companies. All right, so we've got these two. Let's just move that over. So we're going to, this is just parchment paper, by the way. Like I said, you can use thin um, copy paper. So this is the, I think this one is the Gina K one. So this one is the Gina K. This is called Foil Mates. I don't know. <laughs> oh, butterflies, duh. <laughs> and you wanna let it cool down because you want, what happens is this black printed toner is pulverized plastic. As it goes through your laminator, it heats up and it melts. As it melts, it grabs onto the molecules of the foil. The foil then cools down and it sticks and this all goes back into place. So what happens is this top layer is called a, um, a clear transfer sheet. So when you pull this off, the foil is releasing, but this clear transfer sheet is still clear. And this piece we're going to use on toner a sheet so you can see what it looks like. Now, this looks pretty good, but it is missing quite a few places. So I probably should have run it through twice. And again, I am not here to bash any kind of companies or anything. I just want you to be educated. If you had a mink machine, I'm going to kind of show this in the light and you guys will see there's a lot of black spots. Okay, a mink machine would have made sure that it was uh, enough pressure and enough heat that you would not have any of those missed spots. Okay, but if you are just beginning to foil, you're going to think this looks fabulous. You're not going to notice any missed spots. Whoever you send this to is going to love it. So for a beginner, again, under $40 to get started, this looks pretty good. It's not going to be mink quality because we're not using a mink, but it's passable for looking pretty good. All right. Now let me show you this one. This one is a little bit bigger design. I like built bigger, bolder designs because I think it shows the foil off more. And I want you to see the difference here in the foiling. Now, this is the Unity Designs card front. So same company manufactured them, but this is a, obviously a much bigger design. So because you have more bold spots, you see how much better that foil adhered to those bigger, bolder spots? And both of these foils are the same. It's just one is blue, one is um, orange, but they both have that same stars embedded in them. Okay, so in this one, this one's perfectly foiled. I don't need to say, hey, run this one through twice or run this, run this one through a mink. This is 100% foiled beautifully. 
This one, this is how your foiling should look. There are no black spots anywhere on any of that design. It is 100% foiled beautifully. Okay. And the other thing you can do with these is you can now color this in with your markers if you wanted to. You certainly don't have to, but you can. Same thing with this one. They're ready to be made into card fronts. Now I wanna show you guys what you do with your leftover foils here, okay? So your leftover foil still looks beautiful. It has a beautiful transfer design. We're gonna put these on toner sheets. Now toner sheets are exactly what their name says they are. They're just straight black toner. Okay, so Deco Foil sells these. Blue Bonnet sells them. They're the two, or sorry, not Blue Bonnet, Crafty Critta. I'm so sorry. Crafty Critta sells them. They're the two companies I would recommend if you're going to buy toner sheets. They make the best quality of toner sheets. Deco Foil has two kind. They have a super thin one and they have a thicker one with adhesive. It's when you get the thin one, you get three sheets to a page. When you get the thick one, I think you only get two sheets. Belinda says, can you do ink blending? You absolutely can, Belinda. I will definitely demonstrate that in a second. Hey, Tracy, I miss you. All right, so I'm gonna cut these down a little smaller. I'm gonna go five and a quarter by four. Toner sheets are a little more expensive, but they're worth it because with toner sheets, you can do foiling of your leftover foil. You can foil die cuts. Um, you know, you can cut out little sentiments and things like that. They're just definitely a staple that you want to have in your foiling arsenal. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with these toner sheets. Now, again, these are pure black toner sheets. However, Crafty Critta just came out with some colored toner sheets. So we're gonna dusty, dusty. I can actually see dust on this one. Okay, we wanna always dusty, dusty. And then I'm gonna dusty, dusty the back side of the foil. And we're gonna put our leftover sheet on the toner here. And I'm gonna try to line that up pretty good like that, okay? And you wanna make sure your foil is nice and smoothed out. Now, if you get a lot of wrinkling in your foil, especially if you're using the mink machine, that generally means your heat is too high. Mm -hmm. uh, Belinda, you, I would recommend after you foil it. Okay, I'm gonna put that on there. Uh, the next Stamp Wars is April 16th, you guys, and T is hosting it for us. Yes. Okay, so again, that dusted, smoothed out. I'm going to send that one through, and we're going to do the same on this one. Dusty, dusty. Dusty, dusty. Oh, T's watching from work. She's being, she's being a secret, secret shopper, secret watcher. Don't get in trouble, T. T just did a wonderful hot foiling video. If you guys did not catch it, go check it out. She gave me an idea. I kind of went down this rabbit hole, but that's a hot foiling video. That's a totally different subject. Now, because we really need this whole thing to transfer over, I think we should run it through twice, and I don't want to take any chances because I think running it through once is not hot enough. So I am going to run it through twice. I really want to make sure that all of that toner has picked up all of that foil. Hi, Star. Hey, Pam. So I'm gonna run these through twice. I did them once, I'm gonna let it cool down, and then I'm gonna run it through again. You certainly don't have to do that. It's just something 
that I would recommend doing when you're using a laminator. If you're using a mink, normally setting number three is where I use my mink. I'm sorry, Pam. I'm supposed to be doing my taxes right now, so of course, no, Nancy's not doing her taxes. She's procrastinating and playing with foil. <laughs> And again, I will link everything for you guys. I have a ThermoWeb link, a Gina K link, an Amazon link for you guys. So this will help support our channel. I just sent out five prize packages. So I just spent out about $30 in postage. So this is why we use affiliate links to try to help support that. Pam said, you can do my taxes. All right, so we're going to run this one through a second time. Now, what is the advantage to a mink over a laminator? A couple of things. What, number one, a mink has from zero to five heat settings. So a laminator only has one heat setting. It's hot, and that's, that's it. Well, it's not hot enough, I should say. It's hot enough to melt laminator adhesive. Um, but on a mink machine, it goes from zero to five. So it gets much hotter on a mink machine. Number two, a, lam a mink machine has two rollers that heat up and they apply pressure. So when these go through your mink machine, the two rollers are rolling and applying heat and applying pressure. So in a laminator, only one usually is applying the heat, not both of them. And it doesn't usually always ap apply a lot of pressure. So if your laminator, try the laminator you have. If it doesn't work, it's one of those two problems. Normally they don't get hot enough. Okay. So if you're having issues with the laminator, that's why I recommend the swing line laminator or the Amazon basics. And both of them, I think the swim, swing line was around 26. The Amazon basics is around 22. I'll link those for you guys. Both of those work great. Jerry's listening. Hi, Jerry. Okay, so we're going to show you now. Remember, we foiled the toner sheet. This was our leftover foil. So we're going to now reveal the toner sheet. This is the full toner sheet. And remember, I ran this through twice. So again, what happened is this toner sheet is completely covered with toner. It gets heated up. It melts. The foil sticks to it, and now we have two panels that we can use from the same design. Beautiful, right? Now, if you don't like the way this is black and it bothers you, this is still active. You can run this through again and put another piece of foil on it. I'm not going to recommend it on this design because it is so super fine. You may lose some of those details trying to foil them. So I would use these the way that they are. And this is what a clean toner sheet looks like. This is a clean transfer sheet, sorry, foil sheet. So once it's clean like this, then you can discard of it. This is how it should look. If you have good foiling, there should not have any foil left on there. If you have foil left on here, you didn't get a good transfer. And that means, again, your machine probably wasn't hot enough or you didn't have enough pressure. Yep. Yes, these are the Unity ones. Um, in fact, my girls, I bought you guys all these last week and sent them to you. So you should all have them in your packages. I sent you guys this one. All right. So this is the smaller design. Can you run fabric through a foil machine? So for fabric, I would say you're better off using, um, the hot foiling method, Gila, not, not toner foiling. Okay, so here is this design. Okay. Um, so we foiled it the first time again. It wasn't perfect, but it looks pretty good. The average person is never going to notice those black spots, honestly. And then here's the after foil. The release foil, the opposite foil, the leftovers, whatever you want to call it. On that toner sheet. So it's definitely there. You kind of lose some of the detail because this is a dark on dark. But that looks really pretty. And then again, we have a pretty clean sheet so we can now discard of this. All right. So Carol, now you're getting into advanced foiling and I like the way you're thinking, yes. 
So if you have a laser printer, you can print these out. I'm going to recommend you look into some of my other videos, Carol, and um, watch because I do talk about paper quality and printer settings and you want to use a monotone black and white laser printer and you want to print on super smooth paper for laser printing I recommend Hamilco paper yes hi Carla so you want to use um, Hamilco paper and then you can print those designs and actually in our foiling snobs group we have some free designs that you can print and try out yep okay Oh, Cheryl says put that in front of a shaker cart. This is absolutely too thin, Cheryl. See, it's way too thin. It's not like an acetate. It's far too thin to use for that. It would just it would just fall down and stick to your your sequins. Hey, Bobby. How's it down there in Texas? Okay. So, do you guys understand the basics? Like I said, the basics of foiling here. Make sure you have a good hot machine. You wanna use a laminator, that's fine. Let it heat up for at least a half an hour. You wanna use good quality printed. You can buy these pre-printed and, and there's a lot, I have a lot of them, um, images. You wanna use good quality of foil. There are some foils. I mean, you can pretty much buy foil anywhere now. It's a diamond dozen on foils. Um, there's some really pretty designs out there, but if you want to do value, you can get a whole roll of the same beautiful foil for $10 and you get 25 feet instead of five sheets. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to be investing in this, there's there you can you can buy a laser printer for $130 for a laser printer and print your own too. Yep. Okay, so... I'm going to turn this guy off. So one of the things I said you guys can do is you can color and you can ink blend on them. So let me demonstrate that. So I think on this one, I'm just going to color this guy in. color in blue if he's orange. Come on, Nance, where's your common sense? <laughs> and you can use water-based markers. You can use alcohol markers. None of these are going to affect your foiling. Your foiling is already set in place. It's stuck down. Now with alcohol markers, it might show up because again, alcohol markers are a more permanent marker, but um, you can use anything you have. Now water-based markers, you do gotta be careful because water-based markers tend to sit on top of the foil and when you go to rub it, it, it might smudge a little bit. So just be careful, go in light bouts, maybe take a little paper towel and just dab it a couple times just to make sure you get all of that color off of there. I like using the alcohol markers because for me it's quick and it's easy and I don't have to worry about it drying. It's going to dry instantly. Carla, why did you make your daughter an Asian card? Just she just liked that. Actually, I'm gonna take this black and fill this in here. Oh, she loves Asian designs. I get it. Is it was it like a uh, was it one of the new CP ones or uh, local King rubber stamps? Who made it? I'm always looking for Asian designs. 
I think Technique Junkies just did some. Yep, Sue, I'm going to show that. Gotta be careful there. I just touched the black and it smeared. Oh, all different ones. Got it. Yeah, I'm always doing Asian stuff. I used to get a lot of it from the ink pad in New York City, but she closed down recently. But I have a lot from Local King Rubber Stamps has a lot of Asian designs. All I'm doing now is just adding some of my darker orange to the inside, and I brought some of the lighter orange out to, to blend it. That's all I'm going to do with that guy. So all I did was just color it with some markers. I don't lose any of my beautiful foiling. Looks good, right? Okay, now ink blending. So again, that's another reason why you wanna make sure this paper is super smooth so that it blends well. Tracy's favorite blue, Cumberbund from Katherine Pooler. Yes, Tracy is exhausted. Yes, we had a lot of fun. We could have used another couple days together because we were literally working and running around the stamp show all weekend. Um, so we both did videos on that. You guys definitely want to check those out. But then we both went back to work. So we both have been working a lot of hours. All right, so you can go ahead and do your ink blending. Obviously, I could have taken my time and did this a little better. But you can see, yes, you can do ink blending over it. You can color, or you can leave it alone, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> okay. So there you can see with it ink blended, there you can see with it colored, here you can see using toner sheets. So again, for under $40, you guys can start foiling. This is very easy, foiling basics. I know I kind of, when you watch my videos, it's a little intimidating because I do a lot of toner foiling, I do a lot of hot foiling, and I kind of zip through it, and I think I do take for granted that everybody understands the basics of foiling, so I wanted to explain that to you guys. You don't have to have a mink machine. 
if you're just going to be doing this occasionally, but I do recommend it. <laughs> um, let me turn this guy off. But if you just have a laminator and some toner sheets and you want to just start off with the basics, you, you it can be done. Just make sure that your um, laminator has heated up for at least 30 minutes and make sure you are dusting off your toner designs and your foils. There's a lot of companies out there that do offer foils. Again, you have an option of getting them in the sheets. You have an option of getting them in the rolls. Always keep these smaller pieces, even though they aren't big enough to do... Um, card fronts, you can use them for um, sentiments and smaller die cut images as well. And I always keep my foils in their original packaging because you want to make sure that you don't, don't mix up your toner foils and your hot foils. And hot foils are pretty specific in saying hot foils. Toner foils don't always say that. Sometimes toner foils say heat transfer foil, um, which is true, but it's not the same as hot foil. I just went all the way through there. So I hope I answered some questions for you guys. Thank you, Chow. Yeah, we have Gina K, we have ThermoWeb, and we have Amazon for the two laminators. Now, if you are already proficient at doing toner foiling with your laminator and you want to step it up a little bit and you want to do um, your own printing then you're going to need to go to a mink and you're going to need to go to a laser printer like purchasing a good quality laser printer those are videos i've already done that i can do in the future this was just basic for you guys No problem. All right, do you guys have any other basic questions I can answer for you? I didn't, I didn't want this to be super long because I wanted you guys to have fun with these. And again, the card fronts that I use is Butterflies from Gina K. And this is the new one, Majestic Moths. And you can get these at ThermoWeb. Um... They're old butterflies. I don't have those out in front of me, but they had another butterfly, which is a little different. Hold on. This one's very pretty, too. Butterfly Fly Away. So these are both designed by Unity, but they're sold by Decofoil, iCraft, which is ThermoWeb. But they're both, you know, I just have this thing for butterflies. So you can pick those up from ThermoWeb. Hila said, have we figured out our new logo yet? Um, so I think Tracy and I came down the one that we like. We need to do a little bit of tweaking to it. Um, but no, not finalized yet. Close. We're really close. Yep. Colored toner sheets, yes, are only at Crafty Critta. Um, we have a 5% discount at Crafty Critta because that, that expired yesterday, I believed. Hold on. Where'd my, where'd my notes go? Here we go. Well, you might be able to get it. You can try New Foil 20. I think either yesterday or today was the last day because they're in Australia, guys. So you can try New Foil 20. If that doesn't work, use FSC 05. But we've had a two-week discount at Crafty Critta. Mm-hmm. And they have great toner sheets. Oh no, Belinda! I feel better. Okay, guys. Thanks for hanging out. If you have any questions and you missed this, um, put your comments down below. I'll help you out. Let me know what style of foil you like in terms of either hot foiling or toner foiling or if there's a type of foil you like. Like, I love the the blingy foil. I like the foil like this that has the stars and the holographic in it. That's just, you know, what I'm attracted to. I love any kind of rainbow foil. <laughs> so put that down in the comments. Never know. Might have a giveaway coming up. 
I am almost to 25,000 subscribers, so we will be having more giveaways. Tracy is almost to 3,000 subscribers, so she's going to have some giveaways. Um, and we're going to try to make some time here to hopefully do a live tomorrow night for you guys. So make sure you join Foiling Snobs Club at Facebook. And if you're not subscribed already, click the subscribe and the thumbs up if you had fun today. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com. And I'll try to help you out. Kirsten, I mailed your prize package today. I mailed out six prize packages today. And I have another winner that I just picked for Crafty Critta. And that was Cheryl Tice. So Cheryl Tice, if you are watching, you were picked this morning as another Crafty Critta winner. So email us, Cheryl, so that I can uh, mail you your prize. Mail me, Email me your address at foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com, Cheryl. Bye, everybody. Yeah.